Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. My purpose is to help you get free from the emotional baggage that weighs you down so that you can be fully alive and engaged in life. My media includes audiobooks, self-help books, videos, and this podcast. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. I really appreciate the fact that people are listening. I love getting your feedback and comments. And so let me tell you what I'm going to do the next few episodes. And then I want to ask you to consider an opportunity, something a little new and fun that I'm doing. So I'm going to spend the next few episodes talking about waking up your creative self. And there's a lot of creativity in everyday life that people don't even think about. So I thought it might be good to spend a few episodes on that. And there's a lot of therapeutic advantages If you have a little creative outlet, it can be a big one. It can be a little one. So I want to spend a few weeks on that because I think it's very life-giving for people. But what I want to introduce to you today is I'm going to start a segment that I'm calling, I dropped off my baggage, but I'm going to put a link so that you can leave a voicemail of how you dropped off your baggage based on anything you did uh, during a program, during a prayer, or information or suggestions that you gleaned from Life Without Baggage. And the app that I'm using will give you 90 seconds. I wish I could give you more than that, but that's all it's giving people. So I'm going to put that link in. So if you dropped off your baggage, please let me know about it, and I'm going to include it in a future segment. So let's talk about waking up your creative side. So why do I want to talk about this? Creativity takes a lot of different forms. It can be musical. It can be sewing. It can be scrapbooking, gardening, arranging plants, inventions, finance, and monetary problem solving, business, Cooking, writing, blogging, making videos, creating apps, woodworking, fashion. There's lots of things in everyday life that can be creative. And you might not think about them as creative, but many people have some aspect of one of these areas that interests them, that they do for fun, that might be a hobby. But usually if this is something that you enjoy, then it's usually therapeutic and there is a creative piece to it, even if you haven't thought of yourself as creative. I had not ever thought of myself as creative because I couldn't paint and I couldn't draw. But eventually it dawned on me that the problem solving I do with clients or creating these little videos, or creating the framework for a podcast, those are creative. So there may be little things in you that you haven't cultivated or that you haven't recognized, but creativity is in many ways a gift from God. We're made in his image and God is creative. So it can give us joy. It can bless other people, give them joy. You make a little card. Um, Those simple little things, you bake your own cookie or your own kind of lasagna and share it with someone. It can give other people great joy. And it's a way to partner with God. 
a year or so ago, I did an episode on partnering with God, that when we are using our gifts, maybe we get an idea and we put it into action, we're actually partnering with God. The last episode with Java with Jen, we talked a lot about partnering with God for business, but it can be the same in a hobby. And it restores us. Many times the things that I'm doing, by the time you hear it, God has used it to minister to me. So I love sharing information, but a lot of times the way that God restores me then I'm able to share with you. And so it it creates this momentum of life, God giving us life, us sharing the, the gifts and talents we have. It gives us joy and it brings joy to other people. So it's kind of like that circle of life that they sing about in The Lion King. So what is necessary in order to wake up your creativity? your creative side, your creative self. First, I would say you need to be open to the idea that you may have gifts, talents, and interests that you're already using that are creative and you've never thought about them as creative before. It's just something you do. The other thing is to consider that there may be something you've wanted to do and haven't tried. And that that may be another outlet or a new outlet of how to use your creativity. But in order for people to function, usually they need peace. We we are at our best when we are in a state of peace. So I've talked a lot about getting your roots into uh, enjoying the, the presence of God each morning through reading his word and just resting in his presence, that as we learn to cultivate the peace of God in our time, in our lives, in our hearts and minds, that that creates a soil that is rich for creativity. When we're stressed and overly busy, we're not likely to be as creative. It, It puts limits on it. You only have so much energy. But creative energy usually comes out of a a time of peace, an unhurried state of mind. And that's not always possible. There are times in your life where you have more freedom. If your children are little or if you're taking care of um, a relative and your time is really stretched to the limit, you're less likely to have creative energy. It's it's not that you don't have it. It's just that the, the timing maybe isn't right. But in order for us to be creative, we need to be in a place of peace. I tie this back to Isaiah 11 too, that talks about the, the spirit of God, manifestations of the spirit of God. And one is that his spirit can rest on us. And that rest has to do with that deep sense of peace and victory and confidence. Now, when we don't have confidence, we are also less likely to be creative because the creative process is usually not smooth. I'm assuming Michelangelo didn't start off as a fantastic sculptor. He probably had things he had to throw away. And so if we are judgmental of our efforts, if we're judgmental of the process, we're going to give up too soon. But your creative side, your creative self, your creative abilities will probably develop and we become good at things over time. Even if we have a natural bent, even people that are gifted as musicians or in sports, they still practice. So we need to be okay with the fact that there will be some trial and error and not to be too critical of ourselves or perfectionistic to be able to enjoy the process. And then things you don't like, you don't stick with. And the things you like, maybe you build on. So I was perusing the internet on what different experts say about the components of creativity. And I liked uh, this one 
formula. So this is not original to me. But they said the three components are expertise, flexible thinking, and then motivation. So expertise means if you know the basics, if you've been developing, um, if you're a gardening and you create beautiful flowers or arrangements, the more you know about flowers, the more you know about color, the better and better you get. So you start with the fundamentals. And as you build your knowledge base, you have more room for creativity because you have a lot of different tools to pick from. I use uh, the example of if the only tool you have is a hammer, you will hammer everything. But to build a house, you need a variety of tools. The more tools you know how to use, the more subtleties and complexities you can build into a structure. The next is flexible thinking. So being willing to try new things, to think outside the box, to do something maybe you haven't done before. And if it doesn't go well, maybe you learn from it and try again. Or maybe you decide, wow, I really don't want to do that anymore. But being willing to take those reasonable risks, small steps, then we get better and better. Maybe you've heard me talk about when I first started making videos for YouTube. When I look back at them now, I think, that sort of looks like a child made that one. But that's okay. Those were my baby steps of learning to do something new. So that was, I think, 2019. I think I posted my first video. And I've learned a lot since then. And I'm able to build in a little more, you know, transitions and colors and variations of how I do things. So again, we have to be flexible and willing to not do everything right and willing to try new things. And then we develop our style. And then the third area is motivation. If I don't feel good, if I'm tired of something, even if I'm good at it, if I'm getting burned out, then maybe I need to take a break. So there are different things that affect our motivation, no matter how creative you are. If you're sad, if you're depressed, if you're tired, if you if you are sick, if there's too many other demands on your time, then it's just not lining up with everything else. And remember, it takes a certain level of confidence to try new things and to talk to yourself in a way where you are tolerant and can even enjoy the process rather than judging yourself harshly as you learn something new. We don't want to get perfectionistic in our learning phases and we can keep growing in any area when we are kind to ourselves and be tolerant of the fact that some things will go well and other things are a little bit more of an effort. So in the next episode, I'm going to talk about cultivating uh, more intentionally that creative side. I'm, I'm going to assume that the things I've shared today are going to kind of pique your interest, that maybe you're more creative than you thought, or maybe you recognize some things that you can adjust in your attitude to allow your creativity to bloom and increase. So Next week, I'm going to talk about cultivating that creative side, whatever elements of creativity are are already there. And I also want to pray a blessing out of Isaiah 11, 2, that again invites the Holy Spirit to spark your creative side. When I first started my podcast in 2021, I used to close using this verse, so I'm going to use it again today because it so fits with our theme. So Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit can give us peace as we draw on your Holy Spirit in us, that you give us a place of rest so that the best aspects of our mind, of our ideas, of our imagination can come forth. So I ask you, Lord, to bless this listener as they read your word, as they commune with you, to enjoy a greater experience of you as the spirit of wisdom, to strategize, to create a spirit of counsel and of might. 
So Lord, we know that good things come from you and you desire us to be full of joy, to know you and to be able to bless other people and worship you with other people, with our energies, with our interests, with our our mind, with our bodies. So I ask you to bless this listener with your joy, your peace, and ideas about how you want to bless them and their creative gifts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. So I would love it if you left me a voicemail, 90 seconds of how you dropped your baggage. And if this helped you, would you share it with a friend? Talk to you next time, and we're going to look more at cultivating your creative interests.